trying something a wee bit different today. We took a notion that we wanted to get involved and see how we get on because we don't do an awful lot in this horrible world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we get Gary on a, a fent and the fence. chaser. Yeah. That's a new fent, Mega. That's your fan card. <laughs> <laughs> I, see our, I see our name on it, alright. Yeah, it's but, your um, fan. Yeah, well, basically we're we are sort of working alongside yourselves, Fint and that, and we're going to take a wee look at the big nine three nine. She's in the near colours and all, and uh, she's on the chaser to get her broke in, and Gary's having a bit of fun there, and Kirsty didn't want to be left out, so yeah. uh, we got. <laughs> <laughs> we got her involved with the lorry. Yeah. And then I said, well, I need to go and talk to Michael. But it's basically the end of the day. It's 20 to 9 now. Yes. And uh, you're still combining. You're on spring wheat, I'm assuming. No, winter wheat. Still the last of winter wheat. When yes. would the spring wheat be ready? Spring wheat will be about two weeks. Two more. weeks still. Mm -hmm. So this is the last of the winter wheat? Last of the winter wheat, yeah. Over, over the next few days, it'll be tidied up. But Michael, I have to say, well, you know, when I arrived down today, um, I noticed one thing. You weren't in this combine, that's the first time ever I didn't see Michael in the number one combine. Yeah. I had a, another job today, Gareth. Yeah, on the money side of things, Michael? Well, I had a meeting today, yes, for the last of many hours, and all the time you were wishing you were here, you know, that type of way. Well, you must have so been that's the other <laughs> side. that's the other side of the job. How's this season been? Last season was extremely wet and difficult. Yeah. This season has been almost the opposite. This season, we have never seen anything like this year before, Gard. Um, we had a very difficult wet winter. We had two thirds of our annual rainfall by the end of April. Our average annual rainfall. And then we went straight into a drought. Yeah. So there was no spring, crops went in late, and um, even the maintenance of these winter crops, you couldn't get out onto the ground to, to, um, to put on your nitrogen splits. Uh, we had to um, revert to using the mounted spreaders and very wide tires on the tractors to get the force of the nitrogen onto the crops. We um, we were very extremely late planting the potato crop. We planted nothing at all in the month of April. And normally we would um, always have planted some of the crop in February and March. And, and uh, it's the first time that I can ever remember that we didn't. And then we went into searing temperatures in, in the month of June. and. Uh, the potato and root crops and all of the vegetable crops in this area have really suffered and really the meeting today was actually um, trying to assess how the potato crop is going to perform and uh, it's not doing very well so as in bulk in uh, we've because the air temperature went over 30 degrees for a few days in effect, what happened was the potato crop shut down or closed down in the last week of June, and then it, and then some rain came in late July, and uh, the daughter tubers went into reproduction rather than swelling. So um, we oh. now we now have another crop started underneath with this chain uh, growth under the crop that we don't know what the consequences of that is going to be yet and we won't know for maybe another six weeks. This sort of drought condition that we're on about on this particular year seems to be a worldwide problem. Absolutely it is and people talk about global warming and, and the effect it's having and, and this is our real first touch with it. Uh, now Gareth I know you, you weren't around in 1976, but I, I, nope. <laughs> I, everybody talks about 1976, about it being the warmest year ever. I, I remember 1976 and, and my summer holidays that year with the B-52 
big difference in 1976 was we had a very good spring before it. So crops went in very well in February and March and they were at a latter stage when the drought came. So the drought came in June, July, August into September. But they were more established and um, and they were able to cope with it better. So there's a big difference in this year where they hadn't really grown at all when they came. Someone said to me, no one ever talked about 1976 ever until this year. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. the first year it's been talked about or referenced uh, because this year it has been worse. I think it probably is. Well, the agronomists today were saying that they have, they literally don't know what to tell people because they haven't seen this before. Hmm. Well, how how are the yields on the on the grain side so far? Is the winter crops doing okay? Is it Win winter crops are doing okay. They're probably back three quarters of a ton to a ton per acre on where they'd normally be. Now the lads have done a phenomenal job on growing the crops and they, the minding of them, the nutrition, the cleanliness, the disease control. So nothing more could have been done in the husbandry of it. Um, but Thomas and Cahill, especially on the spray side uh, and then Carl and lads then on the fertilizer side but but they've done a fabulous job on them so the whole yield drop back is down to lack of moisture when the when the head was filling now we have compensation for that in the fact that we have um we have very good bushel weights and um, wheat does bushel and between 78 and 82 oh is it absolute oh, massive good. bushel weights so you almost a pure flower. And prices are reasonable. Prices are reasonable. Um, and straw is worth money. So one with the other it will balance out. Yeah, the, I don't see the grain being the problem. Now spring barley is going to be um, practically not worth cutting. So because it got no rain since it actually went into um, into the ground. So what's going to be wrong with it then? Just no bush, no no. no it's literally uh, a foot tall, and it hasn't it hasn't uh, grown really at all. And for the last few years, last few years we were blessed with with very good crops in spring barley. So this year is going to be a bit of a challenge on that side. It's never simple, Michael. Nothing is, uh, in agriculture, nothing is ever simple. And when you see the whole livestock industry and, and the lack of fodder that's out there, Garrett, you will have seen that more than anyone in the silage, in, in, in people not being able to get their second crop of silage. And hopefully over the next couple of weeks, that will come through and, and we you, will you, be you able to. You haven't even managed your second no, crop no, of silage yet? we haven't. For everybody this year is a challenge, and even, even reading on the paper yesterday, where they were saying that farmers uh, are cancelling even their holidays, their day offs, even going to weddings, etc., because they cannot be away from the livestock for a couple of days even. So the stress factor on people is very high. <laughs> <laughs> the stress factor's not too high on Gary. No, not at the minute. No. He smiles of him. No. Yeah. I'm just blown away today. I've got myself a 939 fan and a cross grain chaser. We're in a lovely crop of wheat at Country Crest. Never have I seen a thing like this in my life? It is just unbelievable. Chasing two New Hollands, and, well, you've seen them before in the previous videos, two New Holland 1890s, and just not an issue at all. We're getting four fells into the, the bin here, off the combines, and 
There's lorries then chasing the I'm chasing to the lorries. And she just she fills a lorry there in one go. That's just like bad. That's just unreal. Like there could be I don't know, could be 30 ton of grain on your bin here and like that driver doesn't even acknowledge it. That's that's, that's mind-boggling stuff as well. I suppose you're in it. We've had, we've got this 939 to it's a big tractor like in it. It's one of it's the first tractor we've had in our control like this. Like I would say the 315 last year was she was a big tractor, but this is just next level. Uh, you're kicking on the door of 400 horsepower here. Not overly sure of weight, but I'm guessing she's 13, 14 ton. Just an absolute monster, so it is. But with that, it's so drivable. It doesn't feel like a monster, apart from the bonnet in front of you. It feels like a, it's so handy for the size of it. You know what, it feels like a tractor you could just put to any job. It's, Levels of comfort, like the front suspension is just phenomenal. It's so much travel. It's just, I, I can, I suppose you can tell by my reactions. I'm just in my absolute element in this thing. That's like it's even got a cooker. This, you know, like fridge, and that'll heat your dinner for you. It's just like. I suppose it's the little things in her, you know, and the cab, like everything's just beautifully positioned, even belt and phone holder here. We've been on her most of the afternoon there and it's just getting me dusk now and that's, that's been a good day. Kirsty was down a while earlier, uh, they needed an extra lorry on and uh, she just happened to be in the area and we brought her in to haul a few loads for a few hours and she was in the she was in the chaser there with me for a while. I suppose today is just a bit of an introduction to the tractor that's going to be with us for a while. Um, probably be working on a few projects with it at Country Crest just because of the scale of the tractor as up at home there's probably not a whole lot for it to do in fairness. Year four, this is the fourth season of your 8090 new hauling combines. Yes, and I've gone very well, very, very well. Remember you said when we first came and interviewed you, when we were talking machinery, you said that the way your business had changed, you um, were keen to go to the straw walker. Yes. You had rotaries. Yes. And that has worked out very well. And is that and, and still, are you still in that line of thinking? Absolutely, and especially this year when uh, straw is valuable, um, you're getting a very good quality product coming out of the combine. It's not chopped up in any way. Um, so no, it was definitely the right decision. And the the actual uh, running cost of these machines has been uh, relatively low, yeah, no, definitely. And when would you consider a change? These will, either after this season or especially our next season, they will. I so you, you'll, you'll maybe do something this season? It depends what way Charles is talking, yeah, yeah. So but more than likely, we, we would usually do five seasons. Now, what would you go for? What would your thoughts be now, Michael? We would go for the same machine again. You go for the same type of Absolutely. machine? Is that an 8.90 now? 8.90 8 now, yes. No, they, these have worked very well. You haven't any interest in trying the new rotary? No. No, because I believe in that if you have something that works, don't try and, and change it. Um, we're very, this suits what we want to do with it um, and 
you can keep going longer in the day like it's nine o'clock now at yeah. night time if you had a rotary it will be grunting and groaning now at this stage and you will be having to stop so you will get that little bit extra time in the morning and a bit more in the evening so what's the moisture content like at the minute Megan? tell you now it's 18 percent 18.2 what's that like is that okay that's okay yeah that's okay uh, we all last week we were harvesting at fifteen percent, so um, yeah. So, but no, we're we're happy enough. Once it's under twenty, we're we're happy. Yeah.